Hi, welcome to episode three of Talk with Tati. Today we're going to talk relationships. So today I just want to cover standards as far as relationship goes, types of relationships, as well as when to let go of relationships. Not doing a good re get ready with me this time because I failed horribly the last video, but I will probably do a get ready with me again, maybe my next video or the video after that. Today is also a day where I'm filming very late because it has been a hectic week and this is when I've had the time to do it. I wanted to try to upload on Tuesdays, but that didn't work, so. And I will not be uploading next week, so I'll be uploading the week after. But okay, let's get into it. So let's talk standards and relationships. Okay, so first let me explain what I mean by standards. So, you know, you have your standards and what you expect. I guess you could call them your expectations and relationships. I would say we all probably set standards um, for ourselves and for our relationships, but I think where a lot of us fail is keeping those standards when it comes to certain people. For instance, I'm definitely the type of person who I see potential in people, so I tend to Place what I see in them in front of what they actually show me. I think that's been particularly damaging to me in my lifetime because I kind of create this false sense of hope in people for myself, which obviously we don't want to do. But it's just so much easier just to be like, well, they kind of meet my standards and they probably will eventually because you like the person. Well, let me tell you, don't do it. You set your standards for a reason, and I think it's very, very important that you always stick to your standards because, as I said, you set them for a reason. You set your standards to be what's best for you, and you set them to be what you expect out of a person. I'll sometimes have my friends, they'll be like, why are you giving this person the time of day? I've actually heard that a lot more times than I'd like to admit, low-key. But it's honestly because I see the potential and I'm like, well, I really like this person. One day they could live up to my standards, but I'm starting to realize life is short. And if you don't already meet my standards, it's a no-go. And no, I'm not saying you have to drive a nice fancy car or a big fancy house, or you have to be so rich and take care of me because I don't really need anybody to take care of me. I do for myself, but I also don't want someone who expects me to do for them. Don't get me wrong, I believe in reciprocation in your relationship, but I am independent and I've depended on myself thus far, and I expect to have someone who meets that standard of the same type of level. And honestly, it's particularly hard for women to stick to their standards because when we stick to our standards, we're told that we have too high of expectations, we're gold diggers, we're bitches, we're just told all kinds of things. So it's really hard, honestly, to be with the type of person that you're worthy of. But let me just say, you speak in your mind will never make you a bitch. I hate that so much. Um, and you are allowed to have your standards. If you feel like you should have a rich man who takes care of you and you never have to work a day in your life, that's on you. As long as that's what you and your partner agree with. I mean, that's your business. But for me personally, I just want someone who is my equal, someone who has goals. They're goal driven. They take priority in their education. I'm not saying everybody has to go to grad school and get a master's degree. I just feel like I want somebody who is driven, who works hard and who's constantly reaching for the next level. And this isn't just a women thing. Men should have standards too. You should have a woman who lives up to the type of standards you want. Um, and with standards, I want to kind of get into something else, and that's doing things out of your comfort zone for other people. I am a firm believer that you should never, ever have to be in a relationship where you have to do things out of your comfort zone. Now, I'm not talking little things like trying a new place or, you know, stuff like that. I'm talking big decisions, big lifestyle changes. I feel like a lot of times we tend to do things that we're not necessarily comfortable with or things we would necessarily do on a regular basis because we want to impress or we want to keep that person. And to an extent, yes, you should compromise, you should do new things, 
but if it's a consistent you're always having to get out of your comfort zone i just feel like it's not worth it at that point of course relationships are going to have their problems you're going to have your disagreements you're not going to like the same things but it shouldn't always be a constant battle and i will say from my personal experience and then just from listening to my friends listening to people i've been around a lot of the common issue in relationships is communication and i'm not just talking communicating when you're mad at each other i'm talking about communication from the get-go because having that level of communication kind of helps with that issue of your standards and it kind of helps with that issue of the comfort zone because you don't want to stay with the person and just kind of you know just chill and mingle and never really get to know that person until later down the line and with that communication i want to kind of take it into types of relationships so the three main types of relationships i'm going to talk about are monogamous polyamorous and non monogamous ethical non-monogamous that's hard for me to say i'm sorry so of course you know monogamous is your one-on-one -on -one exclusive relationship polyamorous is kind of a newer term i feel like that we're using but polyamory is just pretty much um relationship with multiple partners but it's like a relationship aspect as where um an ethical non-monogamous relationship is where you have a couple and they are allowed to pretty much explore outside of their relationship as long as that communication is there and as long as they consent and give permission for them to do so and i'm not one to judge i mean if polyamory is your thing monogamy is your thing that's your business but i just feel like it's so important to communicate these things because i find um a lot of people will do things in relationships just so that they can please their significant other. If you're going to be in a monogamous, a polyamorous, um, an ethical non-monogamous relationship, they all require communication. And I get it, communication is hard, especially when it's always being shoved down our throats that, well, by us, I mean the younger generation, like, the 90s babies like it's was always constantly shoved down our throats that there was a problem with us and we whine too much and we complain too much and we're never satisfied it's almost like they conditioned us to not have standards i think that's pretty accurate what about you but with that being said i think it's very important to have standards and it's very important to communicate and be vocal in your relationships it's very vital it's very much a key point to make sure you constantly have that level of communication with your significant other and that communication as i said should really start from the very beginning the first encounter you know that communication should be a start to be established at least so i know we kind of touched on like the beginning of relationships and communication throughout so that kind of brings me into knowing when to let go of a relationship I understand as humans it's very hard for us to let go and it's very hard for us to walk away from a relationship because that's like admitting defeat and no one really wants to be defeated let's be real but knowing to let go can save you a lot of time and a lot of heartache and i say that from experience so just a warning we're about to get personal um we're about to kind of discuss my relationship or i guess my past relationship my mom does watch all my videos so i do want to put that disclaimer because she's mama bear and listening to me talk about these things i know really strikes a nerve with her i get it but so i'm gonna discuss when i actually let go of my relationship and when i should have let go of my relationship so i'll go ahead and give a little bit of context so me and my ex met i was 15 he was 18 and I know I think I've explained this, but I don't remember, so I'm going to explain again if I did. <laughs> but he was um, 18, I was 15, um, high school sweethearts. Um, we left our hometown together, moved here to the Oklahoma City area so I could go to school. And, you know, everything was great with us. We were, like I said, we were high school sweethearts. But, you know, as you get older, your viewpoints and your standards change. And let me throw this out here and say right now, this isn't me bashing my ex. So if that's what you're wanting to see, I'm sorry to disappoint. 
but I just started to kind of, I mean, I couldn't see it back then, obviously, because I would have never stayed in the relationship for as long as I did if I knew what I know now. But I just feel like, I feel like it was just easier for me to hold on to the relationship and just kind of keep that standard window open. Like, yeah, maybe he'll do what I want one day. Maybe he'll want to get married and have kids and be career driven and just have all these different things that I enjoy. But one thing I have really come to learn is that you cannot expect anyone to change their life for you. As harsh as that may sound, it is the truth. And that is why I keep stressing why it's so important to never lower your standards for a person and make your standards and your boundaries and your expectations very clear with that person. But okay, so back into when I should have let go. Um, we, we were together for a while. I feel like probably around the time we got into our like our fifth or sixth year together. Um, I just feel like stuff wasn't working. We didn't see eye to eye. We didn't agree on anything. We didn't have the same um, trajectory. We didn't have the same goals in life at that point. And it was just pretty much doomed at that point. There was a point in time where it was just a lot of fighting, a lot of arguing, a lot of not seeing eye to eye. And it just got to the point where I think we both just kind of stayed with each other out of convenience. And, you know, that came to hurt the both of us a lot in the end. And I probably should have let go at around that five or six mark when we started to establish that we didn't really have the same wants anymore out of life. But like I said, it was just easier to stay together. Nobody wants to walk away from a relationship, especially when I'd been with that person since I was 15. I didn't know any different. I didn't know anything else. And honestly, it was really scary. But, you know, obviously it would have been too easy if I would have just let go. There would be no point of me telling you this if I just let go. So now I guess I can tell you when I actually let go and what happened when I actually let go. So we had broken up January. It was like pretty much February of 2021. Um, he had still lived with me until like June and then he moved out. And of course, we never really like. It just everything happened so fast and we never really sat down and talked so things ended on really messy terms and it caused me to deal with a lot of guilt it caused me to deal with a lot of grief i didn't really know what i was doing in life i didn't really know who i was that's not the worst part though the worst part for me was finding out that my ex is in a relationship with another person not only is my ex in a relationship with another person, but my ex was in a relationship with someone who was just a friend back when we, back before we broke up. Now I'm not going to get all into that. I don't, I don't know anything beyond that. I don't know if anything ever went beyond that. Um, I don't really care at this point if I'm being completely honest, but it was still really hurtful to find out that he had moved on with someone that was just a friend and let me believe that nothing was going on and of course i asked him on multiple occasions but he kind of avoided it and so i deep down i always knew there was something going on at least after we broke up there was something going on but i just really wish that i would have let go when things between us you know were not sour we weren't seeing eye to eye but it was like we could have walked away and both people could have had their hearts intact and that's not something i really talk about but i figure if i want to create an atmosphere where it's a safe space and we can talk about anything then i need to be vulnerable as well and yeah like i said i don't really i mean the details it's not my business i don't really care i mean it was very hurtful and i will say it did bother me for a few days like there was a few day point where i was just so cloudy and so sad and the song <laughs> deja vu by olivia rodrigo came on and i just lost it while it was driving <laughs> it's so funny for me to think about now it wasn't funny then but it's funny now and of course i mean it wasn't the end of the world yes it sucked but I mean, I'm still smiling. I'm still happy. I'm finding things that I love in life. And I mean, 
I'm just enjoying myself at this point. Of course, I don't have any regrets. I do believe I am where I'm supposed to be. And I do have a lot of good things that came out of it. I mean, I have my dogs who I love to death and I have my knowledge. I have my wisdom. I know what to look for, what to not do myself and what to avoid doing as well as watching behaviors in myself and you know how I'm treating the other person. The point I was trying to make and telling that is I think it's better to just let go before things completely blow up. Waiting until you have to let go makes the process a lot worse. The hardest thing for me was the lack of closure because when you just exit a relationship like that and there's no type of it's just it was just done that for me was hard because it was kind of like i had nothing to reflect on at that point i was like what just happened i mean it's been about a year and a half and still now i just find myself thinking like wow what what happened like who would have thought Okay, let's be real. Apparently, everybody thought we weren't going to last, but I just couldn't see it, of course. But it is so hard to see the situation when you're actually in it versus an outsider looking in. And so with that being said, I just think it's important to start to reflect on your relationship and look at things like, is it getting toxic? Is your relationship hindering you from doing things you love? Are you losing interest in the things you love? Are you losing interest in life in general? Because I do, um, I do talk about my depression quite frequently because I just think it's so important for people to see, like, even though I had depression, I still function normally and I still, there is a way out. You're not, it's not a death sentence. It feels like it when you're in it, but it's really not. You can overcome and you will overcome. I'm a little passionate about mental health, so let me bring it back. But yep, so when um, things get toxic, when it starts to hinder you from living your life the way you want to, um, when things get verbally abusive, when they get physically abusive, let me throw it out there. Luckily, I didn't have to deal with abusive. Now we were toxic to each other, but um, it didn't really stem into abuse. I know everybody's different. Some people are the types that are like, when I'm done with the person, I don't ever want anything to do with them again, but I'm not that kind of person. I want best for every person who walks through my life. Um, and I want everybody to walk away as undamaged as possible. And that is why I think it is so important to not prolong letting go of someone. It is so, so important to just rip that bandaid off. Of course, it's easier said than done. But that experience, I not only apply to future relationships, but I also even apply to friendships. Relationships in general, if they become toxic, I just would rather walk away before the way I view that person is completely tarnished. Because yes, we can forgive, but we don't ever forget. And I'm that kind of person where I'll admit, once somebody does something to me, yes, I forgive them, but it forever changes the way I view them. And my ex was my best friend, and I just really wish that instead of prolonging things, we would have just called it quits long, long ago, but can't undo the past, of course. But believe me when I tell you it is so much better for your peace to walk away on good terms than to walk away with no closure and to walk away feeling different about that person. Feeling like you don't know a person you spent a lot of time of your life with is probably, I would call it probably a really, I wouldn't say like one of the worst, probably one of the worst, yeah. But it was a pretty bad feeling and I just, I just really wish I knew then what I know now, but of course I don't. So what I can do is apply that to my future. I can have that conversation with everybody and hopefully it kind of resonates in you and you kind of start to think and apply it to your relationships, your friendships, you know, any relationship. That could be jobs as well, because I have worked toxic jobs 
and I worked at a toxic job for a very long time that I should have walked away from way longer. But of course, as we stated in the beginning of the video, I love to see the potential. I don't focus on what's in front of me right now. But moving forward, I will definitely try to look more at what people are showing me instead of what I'd like people to show me. So we've discussed the standards for relationships, the types of relationships, and when to let go of relationships. But the hot topic we have not discussed is cheating. I save cheating for last because it kind of ties into the standards. It also ties into types of relationships as well as when to let go of relationships. So for example, I've known people who aren't per se into like polyamory or um, ethical non-monogamous relationships, but their partner is. I don't think I need to really explain why that's a bad idea, but I'll explain anyway. Polyamory and ethical non-monogamous relationships, I feel like are relationships for people who can really have that level of trust with each other and that level of security. And now that's not for everybody. I know for me, that probably would never be something I would be into. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds, but knowing me, it's probably not something I'd do. So me being the person I am, I prefer monogamy. So if you're a monogamous person, you can't really expect um, a polyamorous person or someone who is ethical non-monogamous to change their standards for you and, you know, be monogamous. And you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with cheating? So as I was saying, people, I've known people who are in these relationships with their significant other and they go along with it because, you know, they don't want to lose their significant other, which ties back into knowing when to let go of someone. And I think cheating is a big problem that I see in a lot of relationships. And I feel like a lot of people will try to cover that by saying they're polyamorous or saying they're into ethical non-monogamy when really that's not something that you can just, it's agreed upon thing. It's a consensual thing between each partner or partners. Everybody has different standards, but for me, cheating is not something that I would ever look past. Cheating is a deal breaker for me. As I said, you know, polyamory, that's not something I'd really be into because of the way I feel about cheating and monogamy. To some people, it's not a big deal. I've heard people who, you know, they're married, the spouse cheats, they cheat on each other, and they live happily ever after. That's not for me personally, but it could be for the next person. And that's why I want to stress so much that, again, communication is important. When you meet someone you have interest in, I think it's always really good to examine your standards, examine their standards, have that conversation, discuss what type of relationship you like, your views on relationships, and most importantly, making sure your boundaries are well established so you're not doing anything out of your comfort. I mean, I could go on and on about relationship stuff, but I'm not because I'm tired and I have a lot to do tomorrow. So I'm going to wrap this up. I think next week, um, or not next week, but I'm thinking the Tuesday after. So the Tuesday after, which is the 7th, I will upload my next video. I'm going to kind of get out of like the therapy shoes and the relationship friendship type aspect and I'm going to jump into something different so for my next video I will be talking about being homeowner the process of being a homeowner and then the different type of logistical aspects that go into the home buying process so again thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me and yeah I apologize for uploading so late I will try in the future to make sure I'm consistent on Tuesdays which I know y'all don't mind but I just like to be consistent and kind of keep it on a schedule. But yeah, I hope to see you for my next video. Thank you so much for being here. And I hope you have an amazing weekend and a safe Memorial Day weekend. Okay, because I can never just end videos on a note. I did want to say, I think there's some feedback with my mic. It's a new mic that I got. I don't know. But yeah, so hopefully it's not too bothersome. Um, I will definitely check into that before I film next time. Okay. Have a good weekend.